Good afternoon, I'm Spot on Weather Meteorologist Matthew Euler, and today as we come into the fall season, as we get into the fall season, as we start getting into the late fall and the winter, we start to notice more of a dynamic atmosphere setting up in the middle latitudes. We'll start to see more of those middle latitude cyclones, those baroclinic lows, and frontal systems associated with those lows moving through the middle latitudes across the United States. Um, and when we're looking at these baroclinic lows, there's middle latitude cyclones, which causes the rain and the snow across the United States during the fall and winter time. We have to also look in the three dimensional aspect of the atmosphere. And we have to look at something known as conveyor belts. And so I'm going to do a brief coverage of these atmosphere conveyor belts. And we generally have three conveyor belts when we talk about transportation, these conveyor belts transport changes in temperatures, you know, whether it's warmer air or colder air, uh, they also transport moisture and they are, they play a large role in the development of a middle latitude cyclone. And so we're going to talk about that today as we um, get closer to the fall and especially in the winter time, when we see these more intense middle latitude cyclones developing, these extratropical lows. Right, so there's three types of conveyor belts. There's three types of conveyor belts I'm going to briefly cover today on the video. The first one is known as the warm conveyor belt, abbreviated WCB. The second conveyor belt is known as a cold conveyor belt. Um, in this particular image, it's, it's the blue arrow, and that is <coughs> abbreviated CCB. And then you have the dry conveyor belt, which is abbreviated DCB. So let's go ahead and start things off by talking about the warm conveyor belt. And before I get to that, though, just a brief definition of conveyor belts. You know, just like somebody who would work in a factory or at an industrial plant, you know, with these huge belts throughout the whole, whole layout of that plant or that um, factory, what these conveyor belts do in that factory setting is they help to transport um, products along this assembly line, right? <clears throat> Same thing happens in the atmosphere with these conveyor belts. These conveyor belts act again to transport um, warmer air and colder air and as well as moisture characteristics and helps with the overall dynamics. It plays a significant role in the overall dynamics of a mid-latitude cyclone. And we're going to start off with the definition of conveyor belts. Conveyor belts simply are streamlines that are associated with baroclinic low pressure systems. And I did a video back in the summertime on what baroclinic meant, the definition of baroclinic. And basically, baroclinic, when I talk about baroclinic, I'm talking about um, an out-of-phase relationship. Um, I'm talking about temperature changes or air masses that are moving into each other. And I'm also talking about um, mid-latitude cyclones and frontal boundaries, associated frontal boundaries and upper-level dynamics. So the jet stream winds play a significant role in the development of these low-pressure systems that are known as baroclinic lows typically forming outside the tropics in the mid-latitudes. Um, the systems down in the tropics, such as hurricanes, are more barotropic because they involve only one air mass. So we're going to talk about warm conveyor belt first, again abbreviated WCB. And they this is, is basically streamlines that originate at the low levels and generally associated with moist tropical air mass, MT air masses, um, they're located equatorward or of the surface low of that surface low. Equatorward in the northern hemisphere being south of the surface low. And for the warm conveyor belt criteria, the air mass must be either a maritime tropical air mass or a continental tropical air mass can also be utilized. But in a lot of cases, majority of the cases with warm conveyor belt, we're talking about a maritime tropical air mass, very warm and very moist. With the warm conveyor belt, it generally flows poleward or northward. It's going to ascend or rise. The air will rise and turn anticyclonically at the jet stream level. Jet streams generally are, are situated about 300 millibars or 30,000 feet above the ground during the fall, time, fall and the winter time. Right. And in a stable environment, the strongest ascent or rising air motion occurs near the surface low. So if the atmosphere is stable, you have the strongest rising air near the surface low. However, in conditionally unstable air, so now we have an unstable air, 
mass. The strongest rising air may occur farther equatorward or southward in convection, which is those development of thunderstorms within the warm sector of the cyclone. All right. And the warm conveyor belts are responsible for, for the formation of all baroclinic zone cirrus clouds, those high wispy ice crystal clouds associated with both the warm and cold fronts. Okay. So that is warm conveyor belt. Here's a diagram to kind of show you what it looks like. The image on the left shows um, the warm conveyor belt by the very wide white arrow. And then you have a black L on the map and some associated frontal systems, a cold front coming down south, southwest out of that low pressure system. And then you have a warm front that kind of comes out from the, it bends towards the southeast from that low pressure system. And generally what we're showing you, image out the, the left-hand portion of the image is a warm conveyor belt starting near the surface where we live and that warm moist air will continue to rise typically a maritime tropical air mass the air rises up and over um, higher up in the atmosphere all the way up to the jet stream level and then it's going to turn anticyclonically or clockwise if you were to look at the hands of the clock you'll notice how the hands move in a general circular pattern and they generally move in a clockwise or anticyclonic manner. So that's why the winds kind of bend off towards the from west to east up at the jet stream level um, once that warm conveyor belt gets that high in the atmosphere. Now if I were to do a sample of the sounding on the right portion of this image, known as a skew T, a vertical profile sounding, different levels in the atmosphere showing temperature and moisture, the black dark solid line on the right hand side of the image uh, generally, it shows a very moist, the upper portions of that diagram show a very moist atmosphere. Your temperature and dew point lines are close together, and that's associated with that warm conveyor belt, and that rising air motion. All right. With the warm conveyor belt, there's two configurations. There's two, two ways this warm conveyor belt can flow ahead of a cold front. The first way it can the warm conveyor belt can flow is what's known as a rearward sloping ascent. And that is represented by the red arrow on the left. You'll notice how the warm conveyor belt crosses the cold front and then warm moist air rides up and over the colder air at the surface there behind the cold front itself when we're talking about a rearward sloping ascent. And on the other hand, if we have a forward sloping ascent, that warm conveyor belt pretty much rides parallel to the surface front and then intersects the warm front, rides up and over that warm front up to Oh, the air rises all the way up again to 300 millibars or about 30,000 foot level where the jet stream is. So these are the two types of configurations you can get with a warm conveyor belt. Keep in mind, um, the image on the left, now with the rearward sloping ascent, this would be a case where you most likely would see precipitation even behind the cold front. The image on the right with a forward sloping ascent, you would get more of convective thunderstorms, possibly a squall line. Of development, especially down over the southeastern U.S. and Gulf Coast, when you get these really intense mid-latitude cyclones in the late fall, and you know, I'm talking about November time period mainly. But this particular forward sloping ascent, the right-hand portion, when it stays parallel to the cold front, you can get the formation of strong to severe thunderstorms along a line that's known as a squall line. So that's going to be it. The way these uh, the warm conveyor belt slopes can have a big impact on what type of weather you get whether you get precipitation behind the cold front or whether you get strong severe thunderstorms out ahead of the cold front and then it immediately clears behind it. The next conveyor belt we'll talk about is what's known as a cold conveyor belt. This originates at low levels closer to the surface, very similar to the warm conveyor belt in the cool, or cool air that is poleward or north of the warm front and east of the low pressure center. And the cold conveyor belt is associated with cold moist air. And being that it's colder in nature, the temperature, that means the air is more dense. So therefore, the cold conveyor belt is going to flow underneath the warm conveyor belt. So you've got the warm conveyor belt with the warm, moist air. It's lighter. It's more buoyant. Riding up and over the cold conveyor belt, which is lower levels of the atmosphere. And the cold conveyor belt is associated with subsidence. Now, subsidence is a fancy way to say sinking air motion in the atmosphere. This cold conveyor belt is associated with sinking air well ahead of the low pressure center. Um, it generally will ascend rapidly west of the low pressure center 
and you'll get widespread clouds and precipitation associated with what's known as rising cooler air or cold air. And the cloudiness associated with the cold conveyor belt composes the, uh, the comma head cloud system. Now, um, if I were to show you a weather satellite of a classic mid-latitude cyclone, you would notice specific distinctive features on satellite of that cyclone. For example, um, you might see a dry tongue, um, which is, if you look at water vapor imagery, would be a darker ribbon of air that gets wrapped into very intense mid-latitude cyclones, especially during the process of occlusion. Or you might see what's known as a comma head. Um, basically, the cloud image and satellite imagery looks like a comma itself. And so, and I'll show you here what this looks like here in a minute as far as the cold conveyor belt and where it goes. But generally, the cold conveyor belt is responsible for the formation of what's known as deformation zone cirrus. And deformation zone is generally to the northwest of that surface low. The clouds associated with the occluded front, this is also the cold conveyor belt, and the cold air stratocumulus, or open cell cumulus, that you generally see um, behind the cold front. Now this is a couple graphics of the cold conveyor belt. Right? I'm showing the similar thing as I did for the warm. Um, the image on the left shows the two ways the cold conveyor belt can actually operate and way and flow. Um, notice that um, the image on the left, how the cold conveyor belt is north or poleward of the warm front, and it remains north of that warm front east of the low pressure center. It's going to start near the surface. It's going to slowly rise all the way up to around 300 millibars around that jet stream level, 30,000 feet, once again, similar to the warm conveyor belt. But now look at what happens with the path of the cold conveyor belt. It can either make a left-hand turn behind that black L on the, on the image or that low pressure center and then basically come down in, in a, that'd be more of a cyclonic manner behind the cold front, or it can make a right-hand turn and generally continue rising as it, it flows anticyclonically in the higher levels of the atmosphere. Uh, image on the right, the, that portion shows again the, the skew T or the vertical profile sounding of what the coal conveyor belt looks like. Uh, generally you see rising air motion, very saturated atmosphere um, with that particular image. Um, and you generally see where that coal conveyor belt is. So you can have cooler surface air, cooler temperatures because you're north of the worm front and east of that Barrett Clinic low pressure system. All right, and here's just again a quick summary. We look at this, the different two configurations for the cold conveyor belt. If it's west of the surface low, it may follow one of two paths. It'll continue to rise and turn sharply anticyclonically, and that's when it makes that right-hand turn. You see that little arrow on the graphic on the left, it says maximum lift. Uh, widespread clouds and precip in this case, uh, location of heavy snow bands and cyclones if thermal conditions those temperatures favor frozen precipitation there and it's composed of the deformation zone cirrus clouds so if you take a look the image of this cold conveyor belt as it moves to the right if it takes that to make that right hand turn behind the surface low that's where you have your maximum lifting in the atmosphere and that's typically where you get your heaviest snows northwest of the surface low okay on the other hand if it remains in the low levels, it can turn cyclonically and it can, air can descend uh, well west of the low pressure center. And this is responsible for that cold air advection or those colder temperatures moving in on northwesterly winds behind the low. And you typically see what's known as cold air stratocumulus clouds. These are flattened cumulus clouds or even open cell cumulus, depending on whether the system is over land or over water. That's going to really impact the air mass's stability. So if it makes a left-hand turn behind the surface low instead of the right, it makes a left-hand turn, the air sinks behind that, the low pressure system and the frontal boundary, and usually you either get those um, scattered to broken, you know, partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies behind the low pressure system and cold front where the air is it's sinking, the colder air is moving in on northwesterly winds. And then finally, we talk about the dry conveyor belt. It's abbreviated DCB. These streamlines originate at upper levels, upstream from the major shortwave trough supporting the low, and the dry conveyor belt generally flows eastward. And when it approaches a shortwave trough, 
and undergo strong subsidence and drying, sinking and drying air motion with the dry conveyor belt as it approaches this little upper, this mid-level disturbance known as a shortwave trough in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. All right, so here are the paths for the dry conveyor belt. Here's the graphic. Now, here's a different thing about the dry conveyor belt as compared to the warm and the cold. The dry conveyor belt starts up at 200 millibars or in the upper levels of the atmosphere at about 40,000 feet. And just imagine this being one huge large conveyor belt or a large ramp just descending from higher towards lower elevation. And generally occurs well back to the west of the surface low. Okay, and your two paths here would be, one path would be splitting off to the right. You get sinking air motion or substance through the entire air column and that sinking air motion causes clearing skies, immediate clearing skies behind the cold front. On the other hand, if it's if the dry conveyor belt moves off to the left, it will continue rising a little bit. Um, there's a little vertical motion though. Um, so in both cases, the dry conveyor belt means just that, drier air moving in. But this just shows you a graphic, um, just showing you where the dry conveyor belt sets up. Now again, this dry conveyor belt will split into two branches near the low pressure center. One remains in the upper levels, turning first cyclonically, then anticyclonically, northwest of the warm conveyor belt. Okay, and This causes a smooth, high cloud border north. And the other will descend, turning anticyclonically or clockwise, to low levels well behind the low, turning with the east side of a trailing this baroclinic high is moving in. These high pressure systems typically move in behind the cold fronts. And that causes a smooth edge in the western edge of the cold air strata cumulus clouds. So bottom line, if the dry conveyor belt moves off to the right, splits off to the right, takes that path, again, you get this clearing sky through the entire air column. The air is sinking, and that's what's going to happen. All right. And then as far as looking at the conveyor belt, a couple more slides here. Um, just to show you, um, the image on the left is courtesy of the Comet program, and it shows you the various conveyor belts at work. Um, generally, the warm conveyor belt again starts near the Earth's surface, continues to rise because the air is warm and moist. And in this case, we have a forward sloping ascent for the warm conveyor belt because that orange arrow is staying out east and, and parallel to the cold front, which is that blue line on this particular graphic. And you just see the cold conveyor belt, which is going to cut beneath the warm conveyor belt. And in, in this case, it turns um, to the right, the path it takes is to the right. Um, so you got a lot of cloudiness, and the deformation zone is northwest of the surface low. And then the dry conveyor belt on the image on the left is represented by those yellow arrows. And that is well behind the uh, low pressure system as well as the cold front. And then the image on the right shows a hand-drawn analysis of uh, of these conveyor belts, just showing you the general ranges. The different colors represent the different conveyor belts. So the, the, red, the red arrows represent the warm conveyor belt, um, just showing you its path. Uh, in this case, again, it looks to be more of a forward sloping ascent. There's a little bit of a rearward sloping ascent, uh, but it's mostly forward sloping as that warm moist air rises from the surface to 850 millibars, 700 millibars, all the way up to 300 millibars or 30,000 feet, and then eventually turns anticyclonically. The cold conveyor belt is uh, associated with that cold moist air flowing beneath the warm conveyor belt and wraps around the um, low pressure system in a cyclonic manner in this case. And then you got the dry conveyor belt represented by these black arrows, these black lines. And it's now the dry conveyor belt, remember, the big difference between it and the other conveyor belts, the dry conveyor belt starts off at about 30,000 feet, the upper levels of the atmosphere, and the air sinks. Sinks from 300 millibars, 30,000 feet down, closer to the surface. And this is a three-dimensional conveyor belt image, just to kind of wrap things up. Again, showing you how things flow with conveyor belts. Um, in general, warm conveyor belt, in this case, is forward sloping again parallel to the surface cold front, which is that blue line with the blue triangles. Um, so the warm conveyor belt is moving up and over the warm front, air is rising, and then the cold conveyor belt comes beneath that from the east, uh, basically south of that surface high pressure system and wraps around um, the low pressure system, and then you got the dry conveyor belt well to the west of the surface low, 
and then the um, cold front associated generally with the sinking air motion of the dry conveyor belt and those clearing skies once the storm passes your location. So this wraps up the quick overview on conveyor belts. The atmosphere has conveyor belts. All these conveyor belts play a significant role. For example, the warm conveyor belt brings warm, moist air uh, through a great vertical depth of the atmosphere from the surface to 30,000 feet. Uh, anytime air rises in the atmosphere, it's going to cool, condense, form clouds, and some sort of precipitation a lot of times. Uh, the cold conveyor belt is associated with your heaviest snowfalls with the mid-latitude cyclones. On the northwest side of the surface cyclone is where you get your heaviest snowfall. So that cold conveyor belt flows underneath the warm conveyor belt, but that is associated with your heaviest maximum lifting, your heaviest snow, heaviest winter weather. That's why the track of these low pressure systems is just so very important, no matter where you live in the United States. And then that dry conveyor belt brings in that sinking air motion after the storm passes and allows high pressure to build, high pressure builds in, air sinks and it clears the skies. All right, that wraps things up. Spot on weather, thank you for watching my quick video on atmospheric conveyor belts. These are very important mechanisms associated with the dynamics of a mid-latitude low pressure system or cyclone, especially as we now head into fall and eventually into winter, we're going to see more of these conveyor belts doing their work. Um, and that wraps things up. I hope everybody has a great evening. And remember, we're spot on weather. If we're not spot on, we're not doing it right. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and have a great evening, everybody.